The following is a special documentary presentation of News 4. In each of us, there are talents locked away, waiting to be discovered. Talents that lay dormant, even from the earliest days in the cradle. Some of us may never have the opportunity to tap into these gifts. Luckier ones find the key to self-discovery. I know the joy that comes from having a special child. And I just wish the whole world would have Billy Deckers in their life. Because I know a love that nobody else will know unless they accept our children. And find out what they're like and who they are. Perhaps the greatest gift of all is the ability to give of oneself. Rich Muir reports. Tonight, Cradle of Hope, a new direction for the developmentally disabled. Our story is about human potential, about the ability of people to overcome their disabilities and grow from within to become contributors in society. Okay. You'll meet 12 men whose handmade cradles are bringing joy to new mothers. Wow, this is so amazing. <laughs> Through a program called Carpenter's Hand, these men have discovered that they have something to give. And in giving, their lives are enhanced. The men were brought together by Dave Bowen, who said he had a calling to serve a greater purpose in life. It was something that, in my, it was, that was in my heart and in my spirit that I knew that I was supposed to do. Some of the men had spent time in institutions when society believed, even from birth, this was where they belonged. Parents were told to give up on their child. That he wouldn't walk or talk or do anything. We should just institutionalize him in the hospital. This is what it looked like. This is what it sounded like. But how can I tell you about the way it smelled? You'll see the pictures that open the eyes of the world to the worst of institutional life. Willowbrook, and how the thinking has changed away from walls of isolation. Isolation from society was considered protection. What we realize today is uh, that deprives people of really living a life. You'll see modern day scenes reminiscent of Willowbrook, where developmentally disabled children have little hope of a quality life. These are the orphans of Ukraine. But there's a plan in the works right here in western New York that could bring comfort and aid to many of them. The cradle over there is a vehicle for survival. Times are changing quickly for the developmentally disabled. New York has become a leader in moving people out of institutions and into communities. Carpenter's Hand, based right here in western New York, has put the new philosophy into practice, creating a cradle of hope for all who seek to be the very best that they can be. <laughs> Would you like to decorate the Christmas tree? Bill, you start from the top. Oh, I got this thing. OK, put that on. A family of men from different walks of life gather around the family tree. <laughs> They've been spending a lot of time together, learning new social skills that will prepare them for life in the community. Each of the men, in some way, is developmentally disabled. Some spent years in institutions. Others were raised in families that provided varying degrees of support. Michael Rogan received a lot of support. Lots of love from a nurturing family, a family that had reluctantly made a decision to put their son in an institution when he was two years old, a decision they almost immediately regretted. I just remember one time seeing his bed, and it was in a huge room with probably about it looked like to me about 50 or so beds. It was just a whole bunch of cribs. 
one of the nurses said to me, your, your little boy is dying in here. So when we brought him home, we just never took him back again. A happier Michael, reunited with his family, turned into a child willing to take on challenges. He became a first place winner in the Special Olympics. He landed a job making almost $10 an hour in the laundry room at Mercy Hospital. And now he lives independently with two housemates. Do you help each other out? Yes, we do. Yes. Can you tell me about that. In what ways? Like, uh, take turns, uh, dishes. Like washing dishes. Try the dishes. And set up the table. Like, dinners, lunch, and breakfast. I've always seen a great guy in him. Um, he's always tried whatever he's done to do it in excellence. And now I think it's just a fulfillment of that. I think it just continues. Jonathan Irwin is another cradle maker, a man of few words, but very much a team player. As a young boy, he was pretty much accepted by the children in the neighborhood. But as they got older, their interests changed, and Jonathan found himself more and more at home. In later years, he would live with his overprotective mother, who tended to shield Jonathan from the world outside. He was always right under her thumb. Um, he, she didn't want him to go to a work site. Um, we had social workers come in and teachers come in and tell her what's out there, but she felt that um, he should be home with her. I can't do it. Here you go, Mike. Then there's Billy Decker with a mop of curly hair and a personality that won't quit. Now on Music Billy, these days, is the star of the show in his family, but the key to raising Billy was to consider him just a part of the family right from the day he was born. Uh, my wife was taking the videos of me, and I was there, and I was holding them. And I just said, this is my baby, number one. I, I couldn't have been prouder of him. He was part of me. And if God wanted me to happen like that, God knew I would take care of him, and I would. Billy's whole life has been documented on home videos and movies. He's always included in the action, and sometimes he's in the center of the spotlight. And talk about a team player. When his brother Gerard scored a touchdown, Billy was there to congratulate him. And my feeling was if we are a family, you either accept us as we are or else then you don't accept us. And if you don't accept Billy, then you don't have any part of us either. Today, Billy doesn't worry about acceptance. He has the self-confidence to be a leader and the drive to advance in life. I look at it this way. It is fun for us guys to learn. Uh, we should learn a lot more things in life. Uh, we... we we go to work five, five days a week. We show up, make sure you shave, you shower. Um, it's wonderful. That's really good. Thanks, Dave. I love you. You too. Thanks to Dave Bowen and his love for these men, their lives are changing, and a whole new world is opening up to them, as you'll see in just a moment. Reach, reach, reach. Star, let no one define you. You are who you are. John John Fish still rocks to the sound of his favorite tunes, but there was a time when he just rocked for no reason and communicated with no one. sat in the back of his yard and profusely rocked for three or four hours. Uh, 
His whole body was, was covered in, in sweat. John John Fish became Dave Bowen's first challenge. The biggest thing was Dave wanted to know what he got out of it. And he said, the only thing I can figure is that it's a release of anger. And John John had recently lost his father, whose dream was to someday build his son a workshop where he could learn to do carpentry. And I said to Trudy, I said, uh, listen, um, I believe John John can have a better life. You know, would you like me to work with him? And she said, yes. Not knowing about John John's father's dream, Dave Bowen built a wood shop for the man in Springville and began working tirelessly with him, earning his trust. I just felt a sense of rightness. You know, this man needs help. Uh, let's see what we can do. He got John to come out of the shell and gradually we reduced the medication. And then he asked Dave, will you be my stepfather? And from that day forward, he bonded with Dave. He loves me a lot. Um, he does good things for me. Very good. Soon after meeting John John, Dave made a decision. He would devote the rest of his life to helping the developmentally disabled help themselves. It took Dave about four years to bring together a dozen men and learn as much as he could about their needs and how to meet them, how to teach them basic life skills and develop goals for independent living. These people have something that they can add to, to society. Uh, we become a softer society when we integrate them and we become more gentle and, and more considerate. What are we looking for today? Uh, yeah. Stuff? What kind of stuff? We're looking for lumber today, hardware? Uh, give me, uh, wood. The men are pricing wood and supplies for the cradles they will be making. $40 a sheet? Yeah. So I'm saying if, it, if it's going to be covered by, you know, uh, a pad or whatever goes inside the cradle, maybe you don't have to go through this type of an expense to bear the, the weight of this. Assistant store manager Mike Hackford has helped the men that, before. He knows what they're capable of making and he enjoys their enthusiasm. We get a lot of people in this, in this building that are just here to do the, you know, your typical uh, work around the house. And, you know, it's that mundane, doldrum, you know, Sunday, Saturday kind of work atmosphere. Uh, it's nice to be able to take care of somebody who truly enjoys doing what they're doing. <laughs> One for the road, eh? Beyond the enjoyment, this venture out into a store will test their ability to cope in society. Progress is measured in terms of small victories, like Dan here taking control of a shopping cart. This is probably the first time he's ever done that, and he's taking on these responsibilities, and he's just developing as an individual as he does this. As the individual develops, the group gets closer. Dave will often use humor to keep the men on their toes. Oh, that, thanks for the coffee, Paul. No. Uh -uh. I thought that was my coffee. My coffee. <laughs> he's a great guy. What do you think, Mike? You think I should have that coffee? No, I can't. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. You should think uh -huh. about your own, your friend okay. Dave. Do you think we should go check out now, guys? Yes. Okay, yes. let's go. Dan, turn the car around, okay? I help you, Dan. Come on, do it. Dan, we're going that way. That way. Next time, he'll come in there and he'll uh, do more and more on his own. Hey, you look awesome, Dan. You're doing good, my friend. Yep, he is, all right. They're strongly encouraged to support each other. Um, it's teamwork, and it's better if they get leadership from their peers than leadership from me. Thank you. You have a good day. Thanks a lot, Matt. You're welcome. Okay. These outings in the community give the men a chance to put their life lessons to work, but they also spend about 10 to 15 hours a week here in the shop putting other skills to work, and what they produce teaches us all a thing or two about the concept of giving. That's very good, Tommy. Let me see. That's really good. The men are sanding spindles for cradles that will be given away to new mothers from needy families. I mean, with lots of love. There. I'm going to need them.
and um, I'm proud for that. John John has been able to accept the fact that Dave now has 11 other men under his wing. Trudy Fish marvels at how all the men have responded to Dave's challenges. Dave has this ability to make them feel like it doesn't really matter to me that you have a disability, and it is acceptance. But it's more than that, it's dignity. He gives them dignity. You're the new guy on the block, aren't you? Would you like the sandwich? You want to do big mics? Go ahead, buddy. There you go. There's one for you, Mike. Downstairs, volunteers from United Parcel Service cut the wood that will become the cradle's head and footboards. These volunteers came aboard because of the enthusiasm of the men upstairs. So, I mean, right off the bat, you felt very wel welcome. They were uh, very excited to show the work that they had done uh, on the cradles. And uh, I think that's probably what sold me. Mike, you want to get this in? All right. Okay. All the hard work leads to the day of delivery. This is so cool. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Mommy's so happy. Two-week-old Tatiana is receiving a gift that she may someday pass down to her children. The men are pleased and proud to present the fruits of their labor. We do the teamwork and a lot of love. And wow, it is beautiful. Thank you so very much. Oh my God, I can't believe this is actually happening. This is all for you. The gift that they give, you know, is such a part of themselves. And when they give it, you can, as you can see in their eyes, it's just a gift of love. And in giving, they get a lot back. Hi. 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 Beautiful kid. Thank you so very much. Guys, you've made two new friends today. Sorry. Yes, and we did. Mm -hmm. Two new friends. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yes, it is, baby. Isn't that a beautiful baby girl? Yes. 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 My carpenter's hands bring beauty to May you fashion a life that is peaceful and good. Dream on in your cradle, my.